Hey, what's up, everybody? I know it's a lot of confusing information out there in the internet world, social media world about investments. I mean, all of them sounds cute. All of them sounds great, good ideas. And everybody want to do every one. Today, we're going to talk about just doing the bare minimum to become a millionaire. And then this is stuff that we talk about on this channel all the time, but we just want to give you more context into what it is. Now, FYI, um, Alex and I, we are very, very in tune, very, very focused on these areas that we go in. I mean, but truth be told, if you set up the framework and just do this and put it on autopilot, you'll still become a millionaire. I mean, of course, our goals are higher than just being a single digit millionaire. But if that's your goal to just, you know, have a you know, seven figure uh, worth of assets at your at your disposal, then just doing this on a passive, you know, automatic mode is fairly possible. So we're going to start it off with just the stock market. What is the bare minimum you need to do? And if you do this on a month to month basis and just stay on autopilot, it'll get you to a millionaire. But Alex, we'll let you start off with the stock market. What you got? Yeah, so I'm going to be posting up here screenshots from an investment compound interest calculator so you guys can look up any compound interest calculator online um and the age range that i'm going to be using is if you were to start at 20 years old 30 years old 40 years old and 50 years old so starting at 20 years old up here you can see that by the age retirement or retirement age of 65 years old for all of these, um, you only need $115, 15 up here as your initial deposit, 115 as your monthly contribution rate invested into the S&P 500, which on average will yield you about 10% in the long term every year. And that'll take you 45 years for so from 20 to 65, and it'll net you right above one million dollars. So you can see that's only an investment of $115, but time is in your favor with that one. Just 10 years later, if you wait, you'll need to increase that contribution and initial deposit to $300. Same investment, S&P 500 but now it's nearly tripled of what you'll have to invest for just waiting 10 years. And you'll see as this goes on, you wait another 10 years and you start investing at 40 years old, you will have to start with $825 and contribute 825 per month. So it quickly starts to require more capital the longer that you wait to reach that 1 million mark. And then if you wait until you're 50 years old, it goes all the way up to you have to invest $2,500 a month. So it's still possible, but it's just to show you guys, it's not necessarily the investment you have. It's, you know, if you take advantage of the time, and that's why it's called compound, compound interest, is because every single year, that interest is accumulating on top of what you've already accumulated. So you think you've reached a million the next year, 10% of that is another 100,000. But if you're able to reach that million sooner because you've started earlier investing, then you'll be able to achieve a lot more than just a million. But that's just to show you guys and you can play around with the calculator and put in different numbers of what you can afford to invest. Um, but that is just the minimal of what you'll need to invest to reach 1 million or right above 1 million. All right. And, and the stock market and this, you know, there's people out there that are going to say, well, I don't want to wait till I'm 65. Well, then put more, put more. He provides you the minimum numbers to get there at 65. You want to get to a million sooner. You want to get to a million earlier Then invest more than the minimum that you have to put in. But again, you don't have to be out there looking at the cryptocurrencies you don't have to be out there trying to find the next hot meme stock you don't have to be out there trying to follow the next youtuber that's telling you this is the next hot stock to buy um only thing you have to do is invest in the market in general 
95% of money managers that manages people money cannot beat the market on a consistent basis. So if you can't beat them, you might as well just join them. You don't have to pay somebody else to control your money when you can already beat the performance that they can do. So just best invest in the S&P 500 or a mutual fund that's indexed to the S&P 500 or ETF, you know, like the SPY. Uh, that will get you there. Um, the topic that I'm bring up, I don't have the fancy charts and stuff like Alex, but the, the key to this is on top of being a millionaire, one thing for sure, two things for certain bills are going to come. So having it, you know, million dollar net worth, uh, that's all fine and cute. If that's just, you know, uh, a marker that you want to hit in life, uh, more power to you. But the truth of it is, the bills is going to keep coming. Uh, you're going to get older the, the longer you live. And the longer you live, especially when you get up there to the older ages, the less job opportunities that will be out there. So with that, you want to have the ability to be able to live your life, be able to afford to uh, live on your own, take care of yourself and have income coming in uh, even when, you know, you get to the age where you're at social security and things of that nature. And then the, the place I'll go is with real estate, you know, real estate. You don't have to do nothing fancy. Don't, don't get tricked and think that you need 5 million doors. You don't need any of that. I mean, if you stick to Alex plan of, you know, if you're 20 years old and you stick to Alex plan or any of those age groups and you stick to Alice's plan of the minimum that you need to put in, you'll get to the million dollar number. But now we're looking at ways that you can get to a million dollar, uh, a million dollars worth of assets in the real estate market. But then that real estate, that million dollars worth of assets in the real estate market will, you know, give you an ROI of about 10%, meaning cash in your pocket to pay for your bills, your lifestyle and things like that. So 10% of a million dollars is how much, Alex? $100,000. $100,000 a year. But again, just like Alex's uh, math formula there, the earlier you start, the uh, higher the likelihood of you are to achieve it. I know a lot of people, you know, when they first started off, you know, everybody always used the moniker of, hey, $100,000, you, you could buy a $100,000 house and then they use that model. The truth is there's not many hundred thousand dollar houses left where you can rent it for a thousand dollars. I mean, those numbers are higher. Uh, I'm going to go with the mantra of uh, looking for duplexes, looking for duplexes in affordable areas. Um, and I'm going to give you a couple of affordable areas. And then of course you have to be a, you know, a landlord at a distance. So, you know, hiring property managers and things like that, but you're still looking for the the golden rule number of a 10% ROI and that's 10% ROI after paying for vacancies, maintenance, you know, debt obligations and things like that. But if you go to places like Kentucky, places like Illinois, places like Wisconsin, uh, these are like the multifamily property meccas. They have a lot of multifamilies for sale that's still at attractive prices compared to the ROI. So the goal would be if you can't move to these locales, it's you'll need 25% of the down payment. So saving up, you know, you can still put, if you're 20 years old, you can still put the minimum uh, doing what Alex, what Alex is talking about. And then you could do one or two things. You can do the minimum there and then have another cash hoard sitting, waiting to come up with that down payment to buy the first duplex, triplex, fourplex. Or you can do that for, you know, you could do what Alex said for, uh, a length of time until that comes up to your down payment. And then you use that down payment, you use the money from that investment to buy the first down payment on a multifamily. Of course, hiring property managers to manage it. And then you're just sitting back uh, collecting the money from that. But with the income that's coming from the duplexes, you want to take all that income that's extra or all the cash flow and you put it back in the same apparatus Alex talked about. So now instead of putting that $115 in there, you're probably putting $500 in there, $600, $700 a month in there. So it grows faster than that $115 you're putting in or the minimum that you're putting in, depending on your age group. And then once that comes up to another down payment for another duplex, you do it again. 
and then you still take that cash flow and then you put it back into the S&P 500 and then you just keep regenerating, rinse and repeat. Get the down payment, put it in there. So once you up to five, we just stick to duplexes, but let's say you're up to five duplexes, that's 10 units. And then let's say 20 years from now, all those duplexes are written for $1,000 a piece. So 20 years from now, you almost, the house is almost paid off with the tenants paying them off. And then now, and then now you have a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars in uh, rent coming in. And then most of that money is going to the S and P 500, which is still going to get that up there to the million dollars. But also now that those houses are paid off, now you're still bringing in, you know, 50, 60, $70,000 a year in cash flow that can pay for your lifestyle on top of whatever money, if you have a pension from work, you got 401ks from work, you got social security. So now that puts you in a, in a very, a very stable financial state where you can live, you can do whatever you want to do. You can travel, you can do all that stuff in retirement, but that is like the minimum things that you can do to, you know, cross, cross uh, different investment uh, leagues so stock market to real estate. And then now you have a million dollars in both avenues and that brings you up to 2 million, or you can just, you know, have a million dollars in real estate and it'll, you know, kick you off, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or so, $70,000 or so to add or supplement what you already have to live on. And you're still living a comfortable life. Alex, you got anything on that? Yeah. The real estate way, especially you can, you can definitely get more benefits. I would say than going the stock route the stock route i think is very minimal and requires like little to no work especially if you're just investing in the s p 500 i think real estate is going to require more work out of you but like you said that 10 percent return is going to be an income and then the appreciation is going to be on its own you know from you raising rents and such so you're getting a whole different kind of rate you know roi on that with, if you're including appreciation. So I think you could achieve millionaire status way faster doing real estate, but it's going to require more work. But going the stock route is going to be like the simplest form over time that you could get there. Absolutely. And then when you marry the two up, and that's what we do, we marry the two up, we invest, invest in the uh, stock market, and then we use that money to buy real estate and then use the money from real estate to invest more in the stock market and we rent to repeat, rent to repeat, rent to repeat to the avenue. We don't need any more money from the stock market and we just keep letting money go into the stock market and we have enough cash flow to put the down payment on the next property. And then we just keep going about it like that. That's the avenue that we do. That's the avenue that we talk about. We don't talk about nothing on this channel that things that we don't do. And that's the number one goal for us is to have streams of income in different asset classes. So the stock market, then we have the uh, real estate market. There's other avenues out there and you can look on YouTube and you know people will tell you all about the crazy new slick stuff that's out there that you could do. But just trying to keep it to a minimum mind frame, minimum mindset. I know it's a lot of people that say, oh, I don't want to deal with tenants. I don't want to deal with rental properties. That's why you hire property managers. That's why you do deals that make it so you can afford a property manager and you don't have to do the work. I mean, you might have to just do a phone call with the property manager, but you're not dealing with the day-to-day -day operations. You're not getting phone calls from tenants and things like that. That's the avenue that I choose. Alex choose the avenue of dealing with the tenants and things like that. But Alex got some great tenants because he don't get nowhere near as many phone calls as I was getting when I was starting off. So Alex got secret sauce somewhere that he ain't telling me about. But I'm gonna keep using property managers. Uh, but it 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 makes it it makes life so much easier for you in the long run. Like Alex started when he was 21, uh, probably a little older, started saving. But he started investing when he was 21. Me, I didn't start till I was 28. So when Alex was saying for 30 year olds, how much did you need again, Alex, to invest a 30 Three, year old? Three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars. So for me, for me, at three hundred dollars, that's what I would have needed to invest until I was sixty-five. Me, I was of the mind frame, I gotta get there way faster. So every dollar I had, I mean, I, I believe I started at fifty dollars a month, and then 
it quickly ballooned to $600 a month, then $1,300 a month, then $5,000 a month. And I just kept plowing, kept plowing, kept plowing. And then that's how I got to where I was at. And then I started leveraging my investment account to real estate. And then again, taking the cash flow, putting it back into the stock market and just kept doing that over and over again till now that I don't need the money from the stock market. I just, you know, use the tools that I have in real estate to just keep growing that portfolio, keep growing a portfolio in the stock market. And then, of course, businesses and things like that. But we're not going there because that's a lot of more hands on work. We're trying to keep it to a minimum of what you need to do to reach the millionaire status, which most people still try to achieve today. That being said, guys, hit the like button, leave us a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.